And next up is Rob Strano, the world record in golf coaches in the 50-meter dash. And he's off. All right, around turn one, looking good, looking smooth. There goes Rob. Oh, nice little spin move. Oh, off a pedestrian. That is going to cost him one right there. Another spin move. That one he didn't even need to do. There was no cone as he continues through. And he's going down the stretch run. Oh, supposed to go over those, but right through them. Off of the stuffed crawfish, continues down the hall. He's down the stretch run as he finishes yes. with another We're world record. Rob beating his own world record. record for yes. golf coaches in the Golf Kingdom 50 meter dash. Another world record, yeah. Man, if you thought that was awesome, just wait till you see the show. Let's bring in our blueprint for what's gonna be an awesome golf kingdom. As always, we're gonna start off with the build it segment where I'm gonna show you a creative use of your adjustable head driver to fix your golf swing. Then it's a visit to Swing Fix. And in the middle of the show, we're gonna go matrix, a couple trips on course. And then as always, we're gonna close with the time to rise, but we're not really, because there's a bonus segment coming at the end. Yeah, you're gonna wanna stick around to the end where I take you back on the course with me and show you what happened when I played recently. So stick around for the bonus. Are you ready? Cause it's time to build here in the golf kingdom. Welcome to the number one golf variety show in the world. Are you ready to build your game? Here's your host, Rob Strano. Well, on the golf kingdom, if you've been with us all five seasons, you know we begin with the build it segment where I get you something to practice your game with from around the house. But that's not what we're gonna do today and we're gonna use your adjustable head driver so since we're not really building, you know what, I don't think I really need the hard hat. So we're gonna take the hard hat away in this build segment and let me look at my hair. Yeah, my hair still looks good. So adjustable head drivers. You have the screw on them, you tighten it down, but what happens and what can you learn if you loosen your adjustable head driver and it spins. How can you help your game with an adjustable head driver that's not attached? Here's what you're gonna learn. Now, we always are talking about bad hand action going back. So bad hand action would be hand action throws the club behind us. The club gets behind us, then we lift it, and now the only place it can go from there is steep and over the top. I've got this driver, like you can see, loose. I can spin it around. Watch what happens with the correct hand action. So if I go back, I make a back swing at the correct hand action. See how the toe of it spins up? I'll go back. The toe of it spins up and around. So when I make the correct hand action, the toe of the club spins up and around. See that little action? If I do it wrong and go back and I go this way with it, it doesn't do anything. So when I make it go like that, it isn't spinning. The thought is I want to feel like the club stays outside my hands and that I have a little hand set so the club goes boom, and spins around. Practice this, you can get the feeling of going back, making the club spin around. You look at it, you can see the club is outside my hands, it's not getting behind me. So we loosen it and make it spin, and we get the feeling of a little bit of hand action, but not spinning it behind us. So an adjustable head driver, we loosen it to make it work. Now, the second part of it, and I've got my handy wrench here, is I'm gonna take it all the way off. And while I'm taking it off, I want you to go grab a straw or a stick that'll fit inside the head. So now I have it completely off, wrench back in my tool belt, and I've got a straw here. I'm gonna take the straw and I'm gonna stick it in the head of the club and drop the shaft. So I'm gonna stick it in the head of the club. So the straw is stuck in the head just like that. I'm gonna put it down facing you so you can look at it. So the straw, as you see, is pretty straight up and down. What you're gonna do is you're gonna get set up with it right here and the mistake players make is they come down and they release the club early. So when they come into it, your hands and your club wouldn't line up. You'd be back here like this. So you can see that matches the released early position of doing that. So what I want is, I don't want to come in with it released backwards like that, leaning back. I want to come in with it leaning ahead there. So the club, the club heads off. The straw is in it for reference for you, and you're gonna get set up and you're gonna swing back and you're coming, gonna come down, and you're gonna make it look like an X right here, where this shaft is leaned forward. You don't wanna make your normal mistake of swinging down and going back and doing this. That's how you hit those high crop dusting fades off to the right. You wanna feel like you come down, get to here, and get that shaft leaned opposite of that one on the ground. Two great things to practice with 
the adjustable head driver, one without the head on here and one with the loose. See if this helps you clean up your driver swings and hit it better on the course. Okay, golf can be kind of crazy and sometimes I've got to fix the crazy in your game, especially the crazy in your golf swing where you swing the club back and it's going all over the place. So the simple question is, do you need to fix it with your irons or maybe your putter? I got an idea. Let me show you how to fix your crazy takeaway with your putter. So if your club comes back and it does this going back, or you twist it, or you lift it all kinds of crazy directions, maybe the easiest thing to do to fix crazy is to putt the ball. What I want you to do is get on your practice area. So I'm on the practice tee here. I've got my putter, I've got four golf balls, and I always say to my putter, sometimes the start of the backswing should feel like a giant putting stroke. So I'm gonna take my full swing grip, I'm gonna set up like I'm gonna hit like a nine iron, and I wanna feel like I am just taking a giant putting stroke and putting the ball across the practice tee. It keeps the club very calm, just right there. My hands aren't doing anything crazy as I do this. The club is coming back nice just like that. It's not twisting, it's not lifting, it's doing what it should normally do. The back swing in the swing should look like a giant putting stroke. The triangle moves to the right going back and the hands are very calm. So one more time, this is what it looks like. Boom, do that. See if it doesn't calm down your swing and your driver's swing. Practice big putting strokes. You can do it right here on the practice tee with or without a ball. Then grab your iron or your driver and try to repeat it and see if it doesn't improve your ball striking a lot. It's our KISS segment. Keep it simple, Strano. Something really easy for you to practice that's going to help you improve putting today. And here's what I want you to think about. Straight up hill putts. We get some of these, and they're kind of tough because we've got to be really precise with them, but we got to practice them. Ideally, we want to putt a lot of straight uphill putts, and then we want to putt from the next number if we're on a clock. If this is 6 o'clock, we want to be putting a lot of 7s and a lot of 5s, uphill right to left, uphill left to riders. We don't want to get off to the wings where it's 3 and 9 because those are going to have our biggest breaks. So I call this the windshield wiper practice drill. So like a windshield wiper does this, I've got straight, I've got this one, and I've got this one. I got all ends of the wiper. So what you want to do is you want to practice the curves. So I'll start off over here. This one's going to be my left to righter. So I'm going to practice the left edge of the windshield. Let it break in there. Boom. Now I've got the straight in one. So here's our straight in putt. Boom, right in the left edge. Now here's my right to left putt. This one's going to break to the right from right to left, right in the middle. So the windshield wiper drill. Get out on your putting green, find straight uphill, and then think windshield wiper. Think six o'clock, seven o'clock, five o'clock. Practice these. You gotta be really good at these because when you get over here and the brakes get big, boy, those putts get tough. And you wanna really be good with these to keep it simple, Strano, right? Mwah. Do that. And let's see if your putting doesn't get a whole lot better. Well, there's a lot of obvious pop culture out there. Your number one big movies, your number one big songs. We're going to go a little obscure today with our pop culture to help you slicers out there. Now, golf carts. There's a lot of reasons why a golf cart might not be running. The battery might not be charged. It might have a loose wire. Look, it might have a flat tire. Those would be obvious. These would be non-obvious reasons. <laughs> That's a non-obvious reason a golf cart's not running. It's on fire. Or, oh, we look, the car is spitting, car is spitting water. That's a non-obvious reason. Or, well, we ran into a tree. That's why it's not running. Or, yeah, we just crashed it and crashed ourselves. Those are non-obvious reasons that a golf cart isn't running. So Let's talk about obvious versus non-obvious using pop culture. There's a saying, it's called Occam's Razor. Here's what it is. Look, it's William of Occam, and he says, all things being equal, the simplest solution tends to be the best one. It looks like this again, Occam's Razor. All things being equal, the simplest solution tends to be the best one. Slicers out there. If you're slicing it, two things to go to immediately. Stop worrying about everything else. 
Two things I want you to check if you're a slicer, and I don't care if you've done it your whole life, because I fix slices at my academy. Number one thing, your left hand grip. If your thumb is on top of the club, and you can't see any knuckles or the logo of your glove, take that lead hand, that left thumb, and turn it palm down. Put your left thumb way on the side of the grip. I want this palm to look down. I want you to see lots of knuckles. Get a really strong grip. The other thing is, if you look at your video and your shoulders are this way, at setup, they're crooked. I want you to turn them the other way. Get them twisted this way in an in to out position. So strong grip, closed shoulders, Occam's razor. Those are the simple things to fix to get rid of your slice. And I bet you, if you stick with those, their slice will go away. Now stay tuned, we got some more great stuff coming in the golf kingdom, including a Rob observation and a visit to the Matrix. You have now entered the Golf Kingdom matrix. We talk about the numbers and the data of golf. And we're gonna use a little simple math to help you with your swing control. Now by swing control, I don't mean this looking swing right here, which obviously has too much power and is too much out of control. How do you understand your control in your golf swing? Check this out. This is a bell curve. You might remember it from math. It's in the matrix, okay, a bell curve. It has, uh, goes up to the mean and median in the mode, and it goes down. I'm gonna explain speed and power this way. Over here, this is what we're gonna call too slow. Too slow over here. We can't get the ball in the air, it doesn't go anywhere, we can't control it. We get up here to the top, the mean, the median mode, this is your perfect swing speed. This is where you hit it straight, it's under control, you hit it solid every time. As we start to come down this side of the bell curve, this is swinging too hard. So we can have a little extra power here off of our perfect, but that little power might make it go crooked and it might be a miss hit. But when we get down over here, we're swinging way too hard. We can't control it, we can't hit it, it's a mess. Keep that in mind. You have this little spot at the top here where you can hit it with perfect speed, perfect control. You gotta practice and find that. Not swing too slow, and not swing too hard. Work on that. Try to find different speeds when you swing instead of the one that's down here that's too violent. Try to find different speeds to where you get it just right and watch your golf matrix numbers on your scorecard go down. Okay, gang, I had to come here to hole at Kelly Plant where I had this 10 foot birdie putt earlier. I made it. What was interesting was, I was playing with a bunch of buddies of mine from back in St. Louis, and one of the guys asked me, he said, hey, Pro, what are you thinking on this putt? Because he knew it was really fast, because it's kind of flat, and then it really goes downhill, and it keeps going downhill. And if you're not careful, and you don't pay attention to the speed, and you hit just a little too hard, watch how far this is going to go. Look, it's still going, 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 it's still going. Wow, it finally stopped. It's like another five this distance of 10 feet. So you gotta be careful on speed here. What I told him was this. This putt is a two footer. I'm gonna pretend like this is my hole and I'm hitting a two foot tap in. So I got lined up, I looked at it, it's kinda straightish and I went, it's a two foot tap in, just hit it like it's a two foot tap in and just let it go down there, hold your line. Oh, I burned the edge on that one. But see the speed was pretty good. So all I'm trying to do gang, is hit it right here. We make these tap-ins all the time. It's like this is the two-foot tap-in right here that I've got. I walk up and I just kind of 
boom, tap, tap, tap it in. Think about this one. I'm just going to tap, tap, tap it in right there. And the fast green, when the hill will take it down to the hole, if I just tap it down there, boom, there you go. So this is your fast putt tip. Imagine you've got a cup that's way short and let the hill do the rest. And I bet you find you stop knocking putts way down here and having to make that comebacker for your par. No, 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 no. You all thought it was going to be a segment with the cute girl, not me. Well, you know what? You get both of us. This is my staff coach, Laurie Anson. LPGA player, Ladies European Tour player, and me, your Golf Kingdom coach, Rob Strano. We're going to talk about correct leg action here. I'm going to let Laura show you the incorrect movement of the left leg first. So she's going to swing back. So swing back for me and stop at the top. Now make the incorrect move, which is this giant knee slide and hip slide going forward. We can't do that, especially ladies out there. That doesn't work in your golf swing. Let's show them the right way to do it. So swing up for me. She starts down, if I put my hand here, she's going to bump my hand with her knee, then will straighten and this hip will come back. See how she lines it up at impact? Perfect. Show everybody the right way to do it. So top and top, left knee, straighten, line it up at impact, and then come on through from there, right there. She's going to feel like she's going to hit me right. Correct move coming through. Not my head. We see a lot of ladies go over their heads there. Okay, so impact would be lots of knee slide. And hip slide, correct move would be go to the top. My hands here, bump it. Now if I put my hand here, she's not going to hit it and line it up at impact. Practice this at home. Get it in the mirror. See if you can do it right in the mirror and bring it to the course. Because to get the downswing right, this knee's got to go here, and then this hip's got to go there to be able to get it lined up correctly at impact. Thank you, Laura, for helping us out. Yeah. The beauty in this segment to in the coach. This is not about splitting hairs. It's more precise than that. It's knowing to one one thousandth of an inch that every layer of every Chrome Soft is manufactured precisely, which we confirm with proprietary 3D X-ray. Precision technology is not an industry standard, but it is ours. You can hope your ball performs consistently, or you can know it will with precision technology. Chrome Soft, better for the best, better for everyone. Please, please, please help my golf game and help my body. My, my swing is in shambles and I shank it, and I top it and I whiff it. I need, I need help. My, I need... my dear son, what is wrong? It's, it's Courtney Weber from Grit Golf. Are you, are you here to answer my prayers? Yes, absolutely. And the first thing that we are going to do is don't be on two knees when you can be on one. Okay. Go what do ahead. I need to do? I want you to go into a half kneeling position for me. One of the biggest complaints we get about the body is lower back pain. So I'm going to take away all your lower back pain and help you with the sh shakes, maybe. Okay. All right, so what you're going to do is I want you to go ahead and put your left finger down to the ground. Take that right hand and simply reach to the sky. Oh, wow, that feels good. Yes. And now bring that right hand back down. Bring that right knee down, and let's make sure that we get the other side as well. Bring that left knee up, right finger to the ground, and reach those left fingers up. Oh, yeah. I can feel the bad shots going away. You are officially shank-free. Oh, my gosh. Thank you, Courtney from Grit Golf. Where can I find you? You can find me at the Strano Golf Academy in Destin, Florida. Well, here you are, you've hit the ball in the fairway. You got a nice little shot into the green. You've already got your yardage. So what's the big mistake here? Here's what I see all the time in my playing lessons that everybody seems to want to screw up, but the really advanced players. And it's because we are paying a little more attention to what we're doing than everybody else is. And it has to do with your pre-shot routine. In your pre-shot routine, when you're at the ball, you have one goal and that's to hit it. But here's what I see everybody else's routines look like. You'll get your yardage, you'll grab your club, you'll walk over here and you'll set up and you'll take your practice swing and then you'll walk up and you'll set up and you'll never look up. You took your practice swing over the ball and now you're gonna go ahead and hit it. And it's like, boy, hit that good, but why is it so far to the right? Wow. 
Well, you know what you did? You took a practice swing, you walked in and just hit it, and never looked where you were going. Two things, we never take a practice swing at the ball, because like I just said, we have one goal when we're up here, and that's to hit it. So when we're at the ball, it's to get here and go. Practice swings happen behind the ball, because I want to take my practice swing to feel the shot, get my line and walk in and hit it. So it'll look like this. I'll take my practice swing back here. Oh, I love that. Now I'll get my line with my intermediate target. So I'm looking at a spot out here, at least a club length in front of me. So once again, practice swing. Oh, that's a good feel. Get my spot, walk in, look at my spot and get lined up to it, line the club up to it, check it, set myself a waggle, Say it, see my line, set myself, and now I'm good to go and hit it. And that's way more at the flag. I like the look of that shot. So do this correct. Practice swings back there. Get your line, walk in, set and fire. Don't walk in here and you know take practice swings and you're just kind of looking at the ground after each swing. And then you walk in and you kind of you kind of give it that and well, that wasn't very good. Maybe all that is a result of not doing your routine right, which is something simple that you can practice. Well, this Golf Kingdom has been pure fire, and so is our Time to Rise segment. I'm gonna tell you about something fun I got to do on my birthday, which was speak to a Fellowship of Christian Athletes group of 80 people and here's what we did and maybe you've never noticed here on the set we have a piece of fellowship of christian athletes memorabilia it's the game day caddy bib they use now game day is they take the kids on the golf course with the players on tour and they get to walk with the players in a practice round so fellowship of christian athletes what i did was i took the three words and kind of talked about each one now fellowship's easy that's just friends christian obvious followers of christ followers of the way, and then athletes. That was the kind of tough one to talk about. So I talked about kind of what it went into being an athlete, the commitment you had to have, the kind of hard work ethic you had to have. And I told a story about there was a guy whose coach took him out into a lake one day, like chest deep in the water, and started dunking him into the water till he was out of breath. And he brought him up and he said, are you out of breath? He said, yeah. He said, when you want to breathe as bad as you want your goal, then you know you've got the commitment to go at it to be the best. So whether you're an athlete, a businessman, any kind of profession you're in, give it all you've got. Give every bit of commitment to it. Like it's your last breath. Like today's the last day you get a chance to do it and see if you don't get where you want to go. Well, if I've assumed this pose, it means we're at the end of another golf kingdom and it's time to bring in our strand notes. Let's talk about what I want you to remember. Early on in the swing fix, I talked about your backswing might feel like a big putting stroke and practice putting on your practice tee to get that feeling with your putter. Then in matrix, I said, try to swing at different speeds to find the top of your bell curve to find your perfect speed. And then we looked at Laura's legs. Yes, my coach, Laura Yansone, she showed you her legs and how you should move them correctly. And there they are, there's her legs. So have legs like Laura. Now, for more Golf Kingdom, you can go to our YouTube channel. All our shows are there. All our extra stuff is there. Also, we are on Roku, so there's all the shows there. You can find more Golf Kingdom, all the episodes by going there. But most importantly, thanks for joining me here in another... Wait a second. No. We've got the bonus segment coming. We're not done. Here comes our bonus Golf Kingdom segment. Thanks for being here. Ready, 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 ready. It's bonus time. Let's look at what happened to me the other day on the golf course. So bring up the first picture. So this is the ninth hole right here at Kelly Plantation where my academy is. I was playing with some buddies of mine, like I said earlier, from St. Louis. And this is what the ninth hole looks like. You tee off here and you come out by the bunkers and the lakes here. Here's an overhead video. So watch the video. So you tee off and you're going out. So it's pretty wide here, but as the fairway bunkers start to come in, it kind of narrows in here and the lake will pinch. So the hole gets really tight right in here where you hit a driver. So as you're coming out to the fairway, you can see the lake comes in here and the, the bunkers come in. Well, I tend to want to aim up this side and fade it back into the, 
into the middle of the fairway, but you know what I didn't do? I didn't fade it, and it hit here and bounced down in the water. Now, I'm going to show you what happened because it was playable. So full screen, here's the video of what happened. So here you see me. The ball is sitting just barely in the water. It's kind of muddy, so I'm going in there. I've got my, my pants rolled up. i got my shoes off, and I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm funny as I'm stepping on golf balls. So as you see me, I take another step. Oh, there's another golf ball. So I'll f flip this golf ball up onto the, onto the bank. So I've got 110 yards, and my 48-degree wedge goes 125. And I knew I was going to have to choke down. So you can see me choke down on the club, and I'm like, this isn't going to work. I'm way too deep in the water here, and I can't hit that club far enough. So one of the guys hands me my 9-iron. So I've gone from 48 to 9-iron, choked down. Now I've got to figure out, because the ball's way above my feet, I've got to aim way to the right. And you can hear the guys laughing and talking. So I, you can see me keep wiggling to the right, and I keep feeling my swing. I know I can't take a full swing at it. I've got to take an abbre abbreviated backswing. I'm just trying to feel how am I coming into the ball to hit this. And then I'm going to get set, and you're going to see it's very much an arm swing, and oh, I catch it clean shot. out of there. And the guys, what you can hear them hooting shot. and hollering. I hit this turning right to left shot in there to about eight feet. So what are you learning? You're learning how to get in there and prepare to hit the shot. I just didn't walk in there and take a whack at it. You could see all the preparation I went into hitting a really great shot out of the water. That's been your bonus, Golf Kingdom. Thanks for hanging with me to the very end.